when we were used to hunt we should do things like you know hunt for your food and you know you have to like it's not like food was available like like today like zomato swiggy and then it becomes irreversible absolutely yeah students needs to understand that whatever food you are having i always tell my clients that you know you should make this this should be your protein intake this much you should be protein this much should be your carbohydrate okay. this much and this should be your fat so when oh, i'm saying fat okay. it should be like almond good fats let's say you are taking a client hmm. you are personally teaching them fit Mm-hmm. and you are training them mm-hmm. then maybe you can take 10 clients 20 clients but you can't take like 500 clients or 1000 clients yeah. under you directly right it's not like a very high lead cost mm-hmm. you are still going to get 2.5 lakh revenue out of 50000 rupees investment hey guys deepak here and today we are going to have a conversation with simran who is an alpha club member so hey simran welcome to pixel track office hello riri how are you Yeah I'm doing great. How long has it been since you joined Alpha Club? So I joined Alpha Club in the month of October hmm. uh, last year that is hmm. 2022. Okay. Yeah. So it has been more than half year since you were a member. Right. And uh, it was glad to see you at the event as well in Goa. Yes. So how has been the experience so far being a member of Alpha Club? So it has been fantastic like every time I'm learning new things implementing new things like uh, as you have seen like my VSL let's say my VSL was pending for a long time mm. and uh, due to certain things whatever it was not happening and th- uh, that also got recorded in Goa but then I came here at all the way to Bangalore in your office I, rec- I you know did the editing Jan did the editing for me everything got mm-hmm. uh, you know set up all the page set up landing page and everything is done i'm having a great experience i'm learning new things most importantly and hand holding you know that's the because when i see these things i feel very overwhelmed because look like where to start from right mm-hmm. so yeah it has been a great experience i have got new clients and uh, yeah it's still i'm still learning and so much things to do yeah yeah especially when your area of focus is fitness and corporate fitness is right. what you are doing right now it might not necessarily make sense to spend years and years investing time in learning digital marketing and funnels which is what we do right. and you can just plug in the knowledge that we already have into your business which is right. fitness and uh, talking about fitness i want to know how did you like you know uh, come into this whole industry of fitness and now your niche has become fitness for you know corporates and people who work in corporates so i want to know a little bit of that story of how you landed here so did i back in then i was bef- like i got married early but then i was never into fitness as in i never thought i can pursue fitness as a career got married i became an interior designer and i was doing pretty good business with my husband and then mm. uh, after a few years uh, like one day one incident took place where my life totally changed mm. you know i went to an event and one uh, lady who was pretty much elder to me she called me auntie okay and that uh, you know like you know just went deep in my heart i came back home and i was like what it, what happened exactly so i looked at myself in the mirror and when i'm telling you this right now i can exactly live that moment that took place uh, so long i mean so many years back the emotions are coming back when yeah you think about so it. it was like someone just called me auntie and who was much elder to me and then i felt like what am i doing for i mean as in like it it shook my confidence and i started thinking that what will happen when i actually will reach that age of auntie will i look much more elder and then i thought no i have to do something about it because i am making money i'm earning money i'm doing things but what if i am not fit enough to play with my daughter mm-hmm. i'm not fit enough you know to look confident in front of people meeting clients wearing maybe i'm wearing branded clothes but you know i'm not confident so then i thought no i have to take a step and do something about it and i joined a gym mm-hmm. and uh, you know in joining the gym i then realized there uh, there is no female because i was not that confident enough to talk to a male coach mm-hmm. about my problems and saying you know this part is i'm um, like you know i am having more fat here fat there please help me out so then everybody on google was giving random suggestions do this do that do follow this diet do this exercise do more cardio and that's what i did i did random things and after a few months i realized that you know there is no guidance properly and i did something where i did a lot of cardio and doing that cardio gave me a lot of uh, saggy skin mm-hmm. you know saggy skin and all which looked more bad then i took this professionally i started learning and i started implementing on my friends and known people and then i started giving them results and then uh, like in the in the time of 2 3 years i got into it professionally i'm still learning but yes that is how i started my journey i 
trained i opened my own studio in calcutta oh wow yes and i trained uh, females especially mothers like me who are facing trouble i trained some you know police officers also some army families mm. i mean i worked with some celebrities also in calcutta back there and uh, that was my whole thing to work with females more where they are facing trouble but now then after i you know got to know about ddip i joined you and i learned the how you know i can uh, business business online and uh, the tools and everything i mean whatever knowledge you shared it was like mind blowing for me i so wanted to do it and uh, yeah then how i the transition happened where i thought you know i should move online mm-hmm. interesting how much do you think ddip had an impact on you joining alpha club so uh, dd frankly speaking when i uh, joined ddip whatever things the the lessons were damn good because over there not only you all give you give task the mentor i mean jayant he himself does the task and show us ki this is how you have to do but because as i told you i was so new to digital marketing everything i was seeing there was very overwhelming for me i tried to do a website domain hosting and all this and i was like oh my god what is what is happening so i did not follow and i did not uh, get any cash back but i gained so much trust on you mm. like i knew like whatever project is coming up and if you are associated in that that has to be gold mine okay. so when you said and i was looking for an opportunity where i can work with you more closely where because in ddip it was more of a group session mm. so the moment uh, janji told me you know you know you're coming up with alpha club and this is where you know and also you told me one thing which i can realize it now that we will be do- doing much things much closer mm. which next batch might not get that so i didn't want to delay and i just joined and you know i'm i'm very happy that whatever results i'm getting mm-hmm. where am i'm getting stuck that i tell to everyone the trust you you being in the scene the trust factor and whenever wherever i'm getting stuck the help i'm getting which i don't know about other mentors and things like that is uh, marvelous thank you thanks a lot for that and uh, now going forward you are niching down to corporates and corporate fitness so how does the decision to move into that particular niche came about we already had a discussion which we have published on youtube as well and for those of you who are watching this video uh, i will leave the link to the video that i did with simran a while back in which we talked about you know how she should shape her funnel right so uh, how has it been so far and uh, obviously there are a lot of challenges you can talk about the challenges as well so how are you cracking this new market yeah so initially when i started uh, it was like i was working with mothers and it was mixed was mm. both working moms and housewife or typical housewife but now with time i am seeing i'm getting more clients i'm doing more stuff so i had been also doing workshops for some harley davidson people mm. so i am trying to you know expand my business as simple as that but when while expanding i'm seeing i'm also finding a struggle a challenge that is like i'm getting too much stressed out i do i'm not having time to spend with my daughter and i am seeing that i don't have time for my own fitness i'm getting i'm completely you know i don't i'm not left out with energy at mm-hmm. all and uh, like i'm not able to scale up that's the main thing got it so the idea is to reach out to more and more number of people so if in my studio 10 to 12 members comes i'm done mm. i won't have time more to train more people and help more people the idea is to help more people and i also realized uh, in corporate sector people they have a lot of money they make good money but they don't have that happiness in their life they yeah. are so much stressed they all have all the time they are on the deadlines they have to finish their project client client are all the time on their head you know that you have to finish it do it fast or maybe the employees the boss is always shouting you know do it fast do it mm-hmm. you know so what happens they have money but they don't have that freedom they don't have that peace that too much stress mm. so then there i realize that even i am in that phase almost because I, so much of clients i am feeling completely stressed out mm. like when at the end of the day when my daughter says mama let's go somewhere i really don't have time because i'm feeling and at, at times i shout back at her because uh, that's what i'm not having the freedom to scale up i'm trying to do a lot of things in very short time Mm-hmm. so then i realized you know why not take the advantage of the tools and the system that you have and implement it in my own fitness business and take it up and scale it up that is where i thought you know corporate would be the best place where i can help people because i am also going through the same phase and i am understanding the same level of stress one in corporate goes through mm mm-hmm. got it got it so let's talk a little bit about fitness itself because that is a topic which you are passionate about and pretty much everybody uh, cannot ignore 
fitness as a topic. Uh, we also work for a long time in front of computers and humans were not naturally built to do this kind of work. Uh, when humans evolved, they were hunter gatherers, they were like going around, uh, like, you know, uh, eating different things, hunting different things. And we were always on the move. Uh, but now with the modern uh, internet age, information age, knowledge work, we are just sitting in front of computer for like, you know, six hours, eight hours, sometimes even 10 hours in front of the computer. So what do you think some of the basic things that anybody can incorporate into their lifestyle uh, to be more fit? So uh, number one thing is whoever is more busy in front of the computer, you will see they are spending a lot of time sitting. So they have to understand that we body, our human body is me meant to move more. Mm -hmm. We have evolved, but our body is still in that back time when we were used to hunt, we should do things like, you know, hunt for your food. And, you know, you have to like, it's not like food was available like, like today, like Zomato, Swiggy, how it's yeah. available. It was not like that. You have to hunt for your food. You have to even protect your life. You know, somewhere tiger might come. You have to just, so today the same situation comes when we have too much stress. So body is that in that same, under the same impact, you know, that, you know, you have stress. That means the tiger has come, just run. Got it. So mm -hmm. this is how the body works. Works. So basically, number one tip is like within your work, try to walk. Mm -hmm. Like if many time when I tell people be active, they are like, I mean, how we uh, will manage time? We don't have so much time. So I say every hour or every two hours, or maybe in the lunch break, try to walk. If you are on the phone with your client, try to walk. You have to be more active. There is a thing called NEAT which mm. I tell most of my clients that is non-exercising activity thermogenesis. Oh, that wow. is, okay. yeah, that is apart other than your workout, other than your exercise, how active you are in your entire day. Mm. Mm. So that plays a very vital role. And many times people, they join gym, they work out crazy, but when they are back home, they lay down, they are still eating. So yeah. what happens, the body is very smart. When you are doing gym, you are spending a uh, sudden lot of energy at one go. So body is, will try to reserve that energy after that by making you slow, by making you lazy. Okay, okay. So you have to be active throughout the day. Exactly, that's the point. So you have to be, walk a bit more. You know, the, this 10,000 steps idea, you will hear from people, they say yeah. 10,000 steps you have to reach. So that it came from that. So the idea is to be active and see how much, because our watch also, what it is showing, it's not accurate. It is showing a little bit more, in fact. Okay. So you think if you are reaching 10,000, that means you have reached almost 8,000. So try to be more active. And number second is uh, try to incorporate protein in every meal. So now when I say protein, many times people, they say, what will happen to my kidney? Or when I say about supplement, it's like, what will happen? It is uh, bad maybe for my health, but supplement is something very important for people who are really busy mm. and you really don't have time to cook, uh, you know, chicken, eggs and paneer and all those things. Yeah. So uh, protein is one thing. If you can't cook, go for a protein, good protein supplement. And if not, if you have people to cook for you, then, you know, paneer, chana, rajma, chola, this kind of food should be in every meal, whatever you eat. Mm -hmm. That is the number two. And number three is like a little bit of workout. I mean, you don't have to go to the gym. It can be at home with some resistance band in the lunch break. But you have to take it as a goal, a one part of your life, you know. The way you invest time for your work, you manage your work and you do things. Same way you have to manage your, I mean, your body. Yeah. This is the place we're living. I mean, what if, I mean, after 10 years, I mean, from now, you have a lot of money, but you, your health is not, you know, not in your hands. Yeah. You might not be able to revert it. Many times people think, okay, koi baat nahi. We'll do it later on. It's all right. It's okay. Let's earn money right now. We'll figure it out later on. But at times you... Uh, you don't know you have delayed it a lot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then it becomes irreversible absolutely yeah very interesting so even uh, today morning my house is like 300 meters away but i did not just walk the 300 meters i just went around a little bit more hmm. and i made it into like 0.8 kilometers so 800 meters i walked oh which which usually takes like three, four minutes for me to walk from my house to mm. the office. Today, I took like 10 minutes, Right. Uh, which is not much, but it is something. Yes. And then while going back, I will do the same thing. Just take like a longer route. And here in Koromangla, it's very nice to walk. Yeah. So I think those things I have started incorporating uh, to kind of remain active throughout the day. And as you said, just spending a few hours at the gym and lazing around all day is not going to work. You yes. have to be like moving. And even in office, if you are sitting for a long time, uh, you might have to like go out, come back. While coming back, don't take the lift, take the stairs. Yes. So it kind of, you know, keeps your metabolism up ah, and running. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Which is a great point. I also want to uh, know your suggestions and thoughts about vegetarian food and non-vegetarian food. Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts about that? 
so uh, when it comes to vegetarian food one vitamin that is vitamin b12 mm. b vitamin especially it is lacking so a vi- vegetarian have to always supplement a b12 supplement okay all okay. the time because mm. if, when you will see get to see a lot of vegetarians they complain about body pain body aches that's because of lack of vitamin b12 and vitamin d3 that is for every vegetarian non vegetarian both we all we have vitamin d3 also so idea is to go more in sun but then again the sun at times in some regions it's very more scorchy so the idea is to also supplement with uh, vitamin d3 mm. and b12 these are the most important supplements mm. one should consider but yes uh, the problem comes in uh, vegetarian food at times the protein intake is not fulfilling okay the food you will see vegetarians whatever food items we have around us it's mo- mostly carb oriented the carb part is more high and that's the reason uh, indians they the protein intake is so less and they they think ki why i mean everything rice roti chawal dal it's mostly like this kind of food right mm. so you need to one uh, need to understand in uh, non vegetarian that chicken eggs and all the protein intake is real, way more high and it's complete protein so for vegetarians it should be always like rajma and chawal this is a mix of i mean this is a good blend of protein where you are getting the complete source got it so mm. vegetarians needs to understand that whatever food you are having i always tell my clients that you know you should make this this should be your protein intake this much you should be protein this much should be your carbohydrate okay. this much and this should be your fat so when oh, i'm saying fat okay. it should be like almond good fats omega 3s like fish oil and all these things then chia seeds these are some food items and also nuts like almonds walnut all these things so one should if can just do this way no just calculate like this should be my protein this should be my carbohydrate and this should be my fat even this is a very great starting point yeah yeah makes sense i think a lot of people who eat non veg also have b12 deficiency nowadays mm-hmm. uh, like i have been a non vegetarian pretty much throughout my life right. though i have reduced the consumption of non veg in the past few years by a lot uh, but even if you eat non veg uh, what happens is that they say that vitamin b12 is something that comes from the outer layer of fruits vegetables plants where the soil is kind of sticking mm-hmm. uh, to the outer layer so nowadays we eat like vegetables which are like very clean we don't like pluck vegetables out no. of the soil and eat directly so for vegetarians vitamin b12 is not coming the argument was that since animals take like you know uh, feed on the grass directly mm-hmm. and then then you eat like you know the non vegetarian food b12 will come but nowadays even that is like poultry farms mm-hmm. and mass produced non vegetarian food yeah, yeah. so even for non vegetarians b12 deficiency is happening mm-hmm. so uh, i think supplements are the only see way see the to best thing is when it comes to any kind of vitamins i always say don't go on just random things people they have a habit of just googling they just hear something in podcast or maybe in youtube and they will just google and they will so it's always better to consider going to a health professional or a doctor and get a blood test done yeah, the moment yeah. you get your blood test done and it should be done at, at least every 3 to 4 months or 6 months max 6 months uh, yes. i would say you should take uh, do a blood test and know what is the status of your liver your kidneys your what is your body saying because outside we you know perfume we are using perfume we are using you know makeup and soap good good but inside what is the condition of your body is very important to know that is yeah. where that accountability comes in where you will take a charge for your health like the way you take care of your money your business so yeah. give that same importance to your health exactly makes sense so did you uh, my only question to you is right now i'm r- really satisfied how things are going um the help i that want is like uh, now i want to automate my fitness thing right mm-hmm. so yeah so how if if i want to do uh, automation when it comes to fitness what should be the idea so we could look at it into like a you know small mind map so what i have discovered uh when it comes to building like a digital marketing funnel yeah is that you have products and then you have services services right so products have more scalability right and uh, when we talk about products in the digital marketing sector it's mostly like digital products right digital products and in this case it's primarily content mm. uh content and software like for example you could have like a tool uh which will count calories for mm. example you have an app called healthify me mm-hmm. uh which shows you for indian food how mm. much calories you are taking mm-hmm. every day mm-hmm. and whether you are like exceeding it or you are you are like you know um, not having enough protein or something like that right. so digital products is more scalable uh it needs a lot of you know marketing budget but a lot of people try to build business on the product side 
but the biggest mistake that they do is that they directly go and build a product no. and if you want to have a business which let's say makes a million dollars a year mm-hmm. automated without having to do much about it then you need to build a kickass software but you can't build it without having a deep understanding of your customers and one of the best ways to have a deep understanding of the customers and also keep your business afloat at the same time is to offer services so services are not going to be scalable right because let's say you are taking a client hmm. you are personally teaching them uh, fitness hmm. and you are training them mm-hmm. then maybe you can take 10 clients 20 clients but you can't take like 500 clients or 1000 clients yeah. under you directly right you can try to scale it with a team uh, where if you can find people who are as good as you nobody will be exactly uh, you know as good as you but even if they are like 70 to 80 percent as good as you it might work because it is a little bit scalable right. that you are going beyond a certain number of clients and they need some personal training and personal coaching you can have your team members do it and you can give a significant amount of revenue share to them while you also take a significant revenue share because you are the one who is bringing in the client bra- doing the branding and people come to you for the trust that you have built with the audience right, right? so when you look at alpha club uh, you interact with jayant a lot but ddip you did it with digital deepak mm. and then you came into the alpha club program even though i might not have time to always sit and work with you my team works with you jayant yeah. works with you vignesh works with you sometimes adip works with you so uh, when you are trying to scale that is a good way to scale mm. but the idea is to get a product market fit which is pmf mm. right so product market fit is basically developing a product which is needed in the market mm-hmm. and to understand that needs you need to provide a service right and the service can also be in the form of a community because now people want to be part of communities mm-hmm. and nobody wants to like you know just get a service they right. want like empathy connection mm-hmm. uh, friendship and they want to be a part of a network which is what alpha club is also about right, right. you come into alpha club you see other people yes. getting success from vsl email marketing Absolutely. funnels sales and mm. everything and yeah. that motivates you there is a community to interact with mm-hmm. uh, ask about like mm-hmm. you know I, i saw that in kolkata you met a few more alpha club yes, members yes, and, and you had like a meet up yeah, yeah. so people always like value communities mm-hmm. so that is how you look at the overall funnel so for all this you need to build authority right and how do people treat you as an authority mm. like for example in this podcast mm. you talked a little bit about fitness right and that gives you more authority because you have learned about it you have practiced it you have worked with your clients on this particular topic and when you share the information that you have right and when you also make sure that the information is marketed mm. in such a way that it spreads mm. then that's when people know about you and the authority comes from mm-hmm. there so authority comes from let's say blogging and you can maybe publish one blog post a week or two blog post a week right you should have a youtube channel mm. where you are posting at least one video per week right. Right. and it's like a well made video it mm. could be a conversation like this also right. uh if you want to like really take your authority to next level you can publish a book well, why do we call an author an author it is yes. derived from the word authority authority yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. so just having a book published means that you know a certain level of mm-hmm. uh, information and you have the certain level of discipline yes. because i don't need to tell you about discipline you are like you know into fitness and right. and you know uh, that discipline is something that you develop over time right. so you develop your writing muscles that way yeah. you publish a book and uh, you can also take a bunch of blog posts that you have mm. and you can put it into a book, book. Uh, yes. so that way publishing a book should not be like a very difficult task and you are going to stay active in the community right and you are going to build like an email course which can be like a 30 day fitness course yes that will become your like your lead magnet and uh, authority comes through content so as you are creating all this content you also need marketing for that content right, right? i will just say authority through content and then you need to do content marketing right so the biggest mistake lot of people do is that whenever you look at the total market available out there there is going to be 3% of the entire market who are ready to buy immediately mm-hmm. so everybody who does business competes just for that 3% yeah but then you have like a significant portion of the people who will come into the 3% a little bit later but right now they are in the uh, you know a research stage so they are thinking hey i think i might need a fitness trainer i'm not really sure whether i need a fitness trainer or not maybe just walking around every day and doing some little bit exercises is enough so they are still in the consideration stage 
and getting people in this consideration stage is much easier than convincing people to buy your product immediately and since the amount of competition of people in the consideration stage is less uh, you can get them into your funnel easily and you can get them into your funnel by giving free content and not necessarily asking them to purchase something immediately yeah and that is what supriya jain has been doing mm-hmm. she is driving traffic to her 30 day uh, yeah. you know highly paid content writer course and people come into that then they discover that hey there is a real opportunity here mm-hmm. and then they get convinced to join supriya's mentorship program right right, right? so that is how you uh, do the marketing for the content and once you create the content it's not going to get distributed by itself because once you create the content even the content is good it won't go viral because content which is necessary for people like health fitness digital marketing yeah uh, that doesn't go viral only entertainment content goes viral, viral yes. so you have to market the content that you have created mm. so that means that you might have to run uh, facebook ads you have to run google ads no yeah. a lot of people run facebook ads and google ads for their products directly mm. but here you are going to run ads to market your content content so yes. that people can come into your community they can engage with your blog post mm. youtube channel maybe buy your book uh, go through your email sequence and now they see you as an authority hey simran is an authority so now if you have let's say 1000 leads generated mm. through facebook ads mm-hmm. for your 30 day fitness course then even if you expect 1% of them which is 10 people to buy a product let's say which is 25000 rupees yeah, yeah. that's 2.5 lakh in revenue yeah. and you might not have spent 2.5 lakh you might have spent 50000 rupees to generate 1000 leads right. even if you are spending 50 rupees per lead it's only going to be like you know it's not like a very high lead cost mm-hmm. you are still going to get 2.5 lakh revenue out of 50000 rupees investment which is 5x return on ad spend right and that is how you build a digital marketing funnel and as soon as they come into your content what you can do is that you can uh, get them to go to the vsl page and you can also advertise the vsl page directly mm, mm-hmm. but ideally i would ask you to have this funnel as well because before they come to your vsl page itself there is a mm-hmm. little bit of context that Got is it. already set so the next step i will uh, ask you to do is create a vsl mm. which is a video sales letter mm. and you can also drive traffic to the video sales letter directly but i would recommend you that uh you create the content first in such a way that when people consume the content the authority is already built mm. and by the time they come to the vsl the context is already set right. that they know that hey this is what i am going to learn from simran and uh, they would engage on the video better if they have already consumed your content uh you can also do retargeting for your existing audience right because this audience is already in your funnel well, if yeah. they have visited your blog you have pixeled them or they are inside your email list or inside your community if they have purchased your book you would know who they are so you can just target the audience who have already engaged with the content to come to the vsl and take directly people to call booking right and call booking d- uh, can be done via uh, calendly link or a similar link so when you are selling something like let's say a 3 month training program it could be online it could be offline it could be provided by you or it could be provided by your team whatever it is mm-hmm. uh, the easiest way to get people in is that uh, you are going to do like one on one sales mm. uh, webinar sales is fine but webinar sales will not let you sell something at a very high cost right uh, when you do one on one sales you can convert people at like a mid ticket price if not a high ticket price mm-hmm. so 25000 to 50000 you can convert people easily no so when the call booking happens then you need to do sales so sales can be done by you because you are the authority and your conversions will be high yeah but eventually once you start having some cash flow you can have the sales done by a sales team or a sales team member right and you can offer anywhere between 10 to 20% as a sales commission for every sale that comes through right uh, if it is a 25000 rupee product uh, or 50000 rupee product the sales commission tends to be a little bit on the higher side mm. because it's an opportunity cost for them to spend so much time with converting one client mm-hmm. if you have a product which is like 2 lakh or 3 lakh then you can give something like 10% or 15% in sales Got commission it. so building a sales team uh, who will engage with your leads is very important and there is this book called oversubscribed mm. by daniel priestley you should like totally read that book yeah uh, he talks about why one on one sales is very important people are not ju- just not going to convert just by looking at your content and reading the vsl right. they need to be convinced persuaded yes. especially when it's a high ticket price right, right? so when it comes to the product that you are selling or the service um, we can put it at that way uh, in terms of fitness 
Premium content is something that you should definitely add, even though the entire value of the product might not be just the content that you are providing. Uh, having like good premium content uh, takes away a lot of the hard work that is required. Uh, uh. Instead of you engaging customers directly one on one, oh. the premium content will do the lot of heavy lifting. Right, right. Like for example, if Alpha Club members come and ask me, Deepak, how do we do one on one sales? Yeah. Then I would ask them to refer to the sales mastery course that me and Jayanth have yes, created. Absolutely. And he has developed this framework called Badass, Badass. Framework. And using that, uh, people can watch those videos and if they have doubts, they can come back and ask us, right? So you can also have weekly mastermind calls, um, which kind of strengthens the community. Uh, you can have an online community. Uh, this online community can be on WhatsApp or FB uh, or it can be on tools like school.com. Mm -hmm. So all this kind of makes like a mastermind uh, community and... Uh, you don't need to necessarily make it like Alpha Club Mastermind where you have annual events and everything. Uh, in this particular context, if you just want to provide like a three month program or mm. a six month program, mm -hmm. right? So you have three month program or six or one year program, right. right? Depending on how much time it takes for them to achieve a particular set result. Like let's say they want to lose weight. They want to become more fit. Uh, if it is something like they want to develop six pack apps, then you cannot do it in three months, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So depending on who the customer is and how long it will take for mm. them, you are going to systemize the entire process. Right. And you can also add weekly accountability calls. And this will be done by the account manager. All right. So salesperson will only bring in the sale. And once the sale is converted, they will hand it off. Uh, you need to have the onboarding done, uh, which ideally you should do uh, by yourself. And then tell the people that, hey, we have access to premium content. Mm -hmm. We have weekly mastermind calls. We have an online community where you can discuss with other people. And this program runs for three months. And you have one account manager who basically follows up with the client mm -hmm. every week. Hey, uh, did you follow diet properly this week? Yeah. Uh, did you uh, like, you know, uh, exercise this much? And if you have some fitness tracking devices like wearable devices, then you can put it on a chart mm. and you can track the client progress because whether it is fitness or whether it is alpha club, what we are really selling is not content, but we are selling accountability. Yes. Even in the internship program, micro internship program that we do, uh, we have a cashback system which motivates people to complete the assignments. Yes. Yes. So we are not just giving content. Content is nice to have, but we are actually getting people to implement what they have learned and Absolutely. submit the assignment, get results. And at volumes and at a low price, a cashback system kind of acts like a motivating mechanism. But if you are getting somebody to pay a 2 lakh uh, amount mm. and you are getting them into a premium product, mm -hmm. you can't say that, hey, I will give you 1000 rupees back. You can still do that, but that alone might not motivate them to go yeah. through like, you know, what they uh, committed to do. Right. So to keep up with the commitment, uh, you need persistence at scale mm. and you need to have an account manager who will follow up with them. So when you are getting started, you can do the sales yourself and you can be the account manager yourself. Right. But when you start scaling it, then you can maybe have one salesperson and one account manager and they can be freelancers also. And then you can have full timers. Yeah. But you become the entire personal brand through which the business is getting attracted. Running. Which means that you will start having more time for content creation and... Um, you can also create content through the community. Like, for example, if you are having an offline meetup with your yeah, community, yeah. you can mm. create video content out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are talking on stage, then you can create video content out of it. Right. You said that you are training corporates. Yeah. You could create like your own training event. You can sell tickets for it. And whatever you speak in that stage can become content for YouTube yeah. and, you know, all the different Absolutely resources. So that way, when you uh, keep the top of the funnel active and running mm. uh, through your content, and now you are making sales, you are making revenue, you have money to reinvest in Google ads and right. Facebook ads. Right. And especially if you are running a free email course, like a 30 day course, mm -hmm. fitness course, mm -hmm. the maximum lead cost that I would expect is something like 50 rupees. Definitely not more than that. Ideally, it should be 20 to 30 rupees at the current market conditions. So if you are generating, let's say 10,000 leads in a month, mm. which mm. will cost you, uh, you know, at 50 rupees per lead, like 5 lakh rupees yeah. a month, mm. right? Mm. So that 5 lakh is continuously getting back into ads. 
you are constantly generating 10000 leads a month yeah some people will just buy your online course mm. some people might buy your uh, you know mid ticket program and some people might want to go for your high ticket, high program. ticket program so yeah. high ticket can be like one on one consulting and one on one training mm. with you directly yeah which won't be like uh, you know an account manager is handling it but you will be handling them directly so mm. that high ticket pricing it could be anywhere between 3 lakhs and 5 fi- lakhs especially if they are like celebrities or yeah. vips they yeah. would not hesitate paying and why would they pay you so much because you have built a big brand and you right. are all over the Got place it. right in terms of youtube like you know people recognize you like you know just like people recognize han digital deepak so d- why does digital deepak has such a good brand is because continuously we keep investing money into advertising yes, yes. we keep generating leads we keep delivering products and the results of those products speak for itself and mm. then people have a positive image about yes, digital deepak got it and because that brand is built i can charge high ticket for alpha club i can charge high ticket for masters guild which is a program that is going to be next level to alpha club which yes. we are going to launch and i will have the authority and the right to charge that much because i have that much demand because Absolutely. your increase in pricing is always a function of demand and price of anything is a function of demand mm. right real estate price gold price bitcoin yeah. price everything yes. is demand supply and how would you increase the prices you increase the demand, demand. how would you increase the demand using content marketing how would you invest more in content marketing by doing more sales and putting a portion of the revenue back into distributing the content and content creation as well if you yes. just keep creating content it might not get distribution yes, yes. and nobody will know about you and if you keep investing money in ads but don't have good content then all the attention that you are buying will go for waste because mm. people will come see if the website is not impressive if the content is not impressive then they will go away so the investment in getting that attention becomes right. waste so you need good content and then you need good need good marketing for that content and that is why content marketing is so important, important. so this becomes the foundational structure of your entire business on top of which using the distribution and the brand authority that you have built uh, you can like you know uh, improve your sales process improve your vsl uh, improve your account management over a period of time and end up building like you know this particular business has a potential to become a 100 crore business yeah because fitness is a very big industry and as wealth of indians keep increasing more and more people make money uh, it's not just the hospitals who have to make money by giving cure mm. uh, we can also make money by giving prevention yes and it's a much more nobler thing to do to give a prevention Absolutely. because you are not just saving them money from hospital and whatever but you are also saving them a lot of psychological and physical pain as well absolutely right so uh, i believe that selling is a form of service that when you exchange money for services that you provide and uh, you are giving a good product and service then people's life improve because of that so you should remove the resistance from selling that you are not selling mm. to just make money for yourself mm. because obviously you need money to sustain but if you are making more money then you can reinvest more into the business give employment opportunities to more people and you are increasing the economic activity and the gdp of the country itself yes so when you are selling you are not just making more money for yourself but you are making more money for the team and you are providing a better service for the people and imagine if people are fitter and they make more money then they will pay more taxes then they will buy more stuff yeah and the entire economic activity you are like you know uh, kind of setting a domino effect of that economic activity just by the act of you selling something yes and you need to have like very big goals so 100 crore business per year yeah. can we dream as big as that absolutely yeah <laughs> cool so that's i think a uh, little bit of an overview on how you can automate your business and scale and most of your time should be going into content creation, content creation. and content distribution yes 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 makes sense too much didi and i <laughs> and i as, as i always say i mean anybody who wants to go online put their business online do marketing they should definitely come to you i mean i think you have solution for any problem like i know any time i have come to you didi this is not happening that is not happening you have always uh, given yeah. me solution yes absolutely yes, yes. cool i think uh, if we stick to this process within one or two years yes, i think yes. your business yes, will really first year it took up. me some time but yeah by second year i yeah. think yes absolutely you can do that yeah yeah i hope to see you in alpha club for several years to come absolutely yes i am even expecting yes. to join that master guild oh fantastic
Awesome. Cool. So I think uh, it has been a very good conversation so far. Uh, really. We discussed a lot about fitness. Hmm. We discussed about digital marketing, your specific funnel. I think anybody in the fitness space or any service or freelancing space for that matter can, you know, look at this particular strategy and see how my mind works to build the digital deeper yes, brand absolutely. and how you can replicate this system as well. So any final words, Simran? Uh, no, Didi, I'm like, uh, I'm very thankful to you. And mm. I'm, as I say, like the trust I have towards you for anything and the, these kind of ideas that you give, just implementing it, one can, yeah, 100 crores, CB zada. I mean, I can do more than that. I mean, Fantastic. if I can do this, yeah. Yes, awesome. So thank you, Simran, for doing this podcast. Thank you for pleasure, taking Didi. time to yeah. visit Bangalore and visit our office. Uh, it's it's uh, great to have you in Alpha Club. Uh, and uh, Alpha Club is strengthened by having people from different walks of life okay. somebody is good at content somebody is good at sales somebody mm. is good at automation somebody mm. is good at fitness one person is good at yoga and uh, that's what makes the alpha club uh, you know very enriching because yeah. you have people from different walks mm. of life mm. with different focus areas and uh, i will see you around yeah thank you so Thanks much a lot. Bye-bye. Yeah. bye bye